if we're going to talk about individual performances, the number one takeaway is they played they played together in that third quarter when they needed to. Uh, they put their foot on the gas and they and they distanced themselves and they, they they did what they're supposed to do with a team like this, which is great. On the individual performances, I'm again going to look at Brown. This was so economical and efficient and what he was doing. And again, another game where I just felt like he was doing the right thing. He didn't settle for weird stuff. He like. I, a couple of times I loved, I can't remember who he did, backing his way into the point. I mean, backing his way into the post and just spinning around guys for dunks who were just like, they're like, I can't guard this guy here. You know, whoever it was, was like, this is impossible. I can't do this. And stuff like that is just great because it's just imposing your physical will on an opponent in a different way than Jalen's done it in the past, which is usually let me just fly through, get into the lane and whatever's waiting for me there. I'll deal with it when I get there. This was a, I'm going to just back a guy down. ISO this, get my way all the way in. And then I'm just going to work. It is so hard to stop that when he does that and it's controlled and it's patient. And he did it multiple times tonight, either resulted in spinning around and getting a dunk or a layup or being able to get one of those turnarounds from the post, which for him is just a, is just a money shot. Yeah. And he, I thought was really good on in Friday's game as well. I came out of it pretty conflicted because of the seven turnovers, because of some of the miscues there. But when you consider Tatum's out, you're going against a team that has some weird, funky defensive uh, abilities and personnel that can play bigger and pack the paint against you. It was one of those games where we've talked about, John. Yeah, the turnovers right. might tick up a little higher than you want them to, but his aggressiveness really opens things up, especially late in that game after the Raptors came back. So I, I loved him that night. I loved his whole month. The numbers, I have them right in front of me here, don't look amazing. Like nothing that would like catch your eye on paper, 24, 5, and 4, not including this game. But 53 from the field, getting up to 37 from 3 this month. Uh, back to the free throw line quite a bit too. That's exactly what you were looking for from him in this offense because it was going to look different this year. Maybe a little bit of a smaller role, sometimes fewer shots. But the control, as you mentioned, the decision-making – and the consistency, really, like you're not seeing him have those games where he's uninvolved for quarters at a time or a night where he's just lost in the shuffle because other guys have it going. It seems like the hierarchy is pretty well set on this team. Uh, in I a just way think that, he's making the I just think he's making the, the right decision more yeah. off more often. It's as simple as that. I just think he's choosing wisely, like way more. And a lot of it is what's funny is. Old Jalen to me was, hey, to counteract Tatum's sleepy walk it up the floor stuff, like Jalen was the guy who would attack and get it and go and and so and be instant offense in that way and and just drive the paint when when we when when you weren't getting a lot of uh, paint looks and when people were settling for jumpers and Jalen be the guy who would go and then you would have to manage his turnovers there because you'd say, well, that's it. He's going fast. And maybe that's what happened a little bit more last game without Tatum, where he felt he had to do more on his own or is that was the last game without Tatum. Yeah. Raptors. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so maybe that's where he kind of did a little too much, but when he's playing in the kind of, you know, the, the, the setup that they have here with the multiple starters when Tatum's on the floor, I actually find that what's better is his, him slowing it way down. Um, and he's playing with a lot more patience and a lot more poise. When he doesn't have it, he sets it back up. He lost the he lost the dribble one time going to the basket, and he just collected himself rather than just kept going and and you know rose up and tried to get you know, make a really high degree of difficulty shot. I think that's what he's doing more of is he's doing that. He's not just like ah oh, screw it, I'm here, I'll just shoot it and see what happens. He's passing out of those difficult situations a lot more than he was before, whether it results in anything or not. I know he had the super high potential assist number the other night too but again i didn't watch those games i just kind of followed the box scores there just from tonight like i said is it just looks patient it was an incredibly efficient night for him in terms of his scoring i mean it's very very economical in, in in everything that he did fanduel is the exclusive wagering partner of the clns media network right now new customers get 150 dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar money line bet fanduel official partner of the NFL. 
Yeah, and when you combine that, some of the defensive flashes from this first half of this year before we flip into 2024. And then tonight, you mentioned him being sometimes that more aggressive, faster uh, end of the team's identity compared to Tatum's more methodical approach. I liked how they were able to do both in this game. Tatum able to set himself up for jump shots when necessary. Brown able to get ahead in that third quarter, as you mentioned, with all the dunks and breakout scores and even the isolations on guys in the post. I mean, those were there for the taking. We've seen Tatum take those. We've seen Porzingis take those, and he was weirdly off in this game. He was. I kind of wanted to see him dominate the original unicorn versus the Wemby. I wanted them to show the whippersnapper. <laughs> Those guys were going at each other and just completely canceling each other out. But he came in a little cold, and that was too yeah. bad. I, I wanted to see him, uh, you know, uh, you know, do a little something there. It didn't happen. Yeah, and he came. He finished this month thirty-two percent from three, which he was red hot yep. to start the year from outside. You'd like to see him get that back up next month, uh, but still. Yep. Most efficient post player in the league through the first stint of the schedule here. You see Brown pulling that out, Tatum. It's just a nice, well balanced offense. The entire right team. Now. The entire team in the post, Bobby. I mean, we've been, we begged for that, right? Yeah. Like, we begged for that. It's a like, way to get paint uh, or post shots off because they never do it. When they're driving, they're always kicking. You know, they'll get in transition sometimes, but they're not a very fast team. So, Figuring out ways this season to counteract the bad three-point shooting when it happens. And, you know, I do want to look at what the record is on their bad three-point shooting nights. And I feel like it's going to be much better than it was a year ago when they went 13 and 19 in those nights where they shot below average. 36 in this one, so you're right about average. Uh, But on the nights where they haven't shot well from three, you have the offensive rebounding, you have the post-ups and you have the transition game to counteract the bad shooting, and that's why they've been able to start 26-6 and here. Really, uh, you know, when I had Law Murray on last week, John, before the Clippers game, he put it well. This team's lost six games, and five of them were in crunch time. So it's just a few late-game miscues, some games where Derek White was out and the offense got a little scattered, or leads that they blew where they're losing these games. Otherwise, they could be through 32 games here, 31 and one. And yeah. if they just handle some of those late game situations better. So that's the kind of start we're seeing here. It's just amazing how they're taking care of business because they would lose that Pistons game a year ago. They would have lost any that number. That happened of early in the year too, games. Bobby. But how many games, Bobby, at the beginning of the year, did we say they lose this game last year? They lose this game last year. The heat, you know, the one where, you know, where Jalen had that meltdown and they went, they went all the way to down seven and came back and won that game. Um, They had a lot of games where they blew leads and then, and still won them or they were in crunch time. I I think in the first 10 games, the first 10 wins, there were five games where we're like, that game might go different last year. They've had quite a few of those. So they're much better at this stuff and they do avoid those like oh my god i can't believe you lost this game games